Psalms 135. Praise ye the Lord. Praise ye the name of the Lord. Praise him, O ye servants of the Lord. Plain and simple. We see it over and over in the Psalms. Ye that stand in the house of the Lord. That's to be the temple. The Levites. Those who are there in the temple doing what they're supposed to. In the courts of the house of our God. Now the courts are the, are the rooms outside the temple. Where they kept goods and storage and what they needed. So all the workers, all the people are visiting the temple. Praise ye the Lord. Praise the Lord for the Lord is good. Sing praises unto his name. Oh. What is missing from the contemporary Christian music today? Oh, they sing praise, but not the name of God. You, you pop on that radio station, any radio station that has that music, and you write the words down, you will not find the name of Jesus. You will not find the name of God in a love song to somebody you can write to a human being. For it is pleasant. The name of God is pleasant. The Lord is good. For the Lord has chosen Jacob unto himself. We know who Jacob is. Then he was renamed and Israel for his particular treasure. You know, God gives, when God renames somebody in the Bible, it's because something about their old character has changed. Abram had a son that he wasn't supposed to have, so he came called him Abraham. So, <clears throat> When you do an article about Ishmael being of Abraham, it's a lie. Ishmael is of Abram. When Jacob, the surplanter, who had a scheme for everything, is renamed to Israel. For I know that the Lord is great. He's good and great. There are people out there who say they're good and great. Only God. And that our Lord is above all gods. And yes, the Bible acknowledges that there are gods. The Bible doesn't hide the fact. There are gods out there. And Isaiah writes about God. He says, I look around, do I see any gods? I don't see any. And when God's being sarcastic, there's, you know what? There are gods, but he is the God of all gods. And all those gods will be judged by God. Whatsoever the Lord please, that did he in heaven and in earth, in the seas and, and all deep places. And what it is but God did what he pleased was it's always holy and right. It's never wrong. So, if God does everything that's right and pleasing to him, and that he is long-suffering, not willing that any should perish or any should go into hell, who do you think planted the tree of the knowledge of, of good and evil? That the Lord had to say, don't you eat that fruit. But then again, there's another particular passage in Isaiah where it says that God created evil. And that's not sin. We read about the good and evil figs today of Jeremiah. Calamity. Good for nothing. Those tares that, that are sown amongst the, the, the wheat. Yeah, Satan planted those tares, but God created all life. Satan can't create life. We've learned that, that from the womb, it's of God. Satan tried to uh, bring forth lice, and he couldn't in, among the Egypt, yeah, amongst the Egyptian plagues. Remember, God said, "Take the dust, and, and it'll become forth lice." Satan couldn't do that. He causes the vapors to ascend from the ends of the earth. He maketh lightnings for the rain, and bring he bringeth the wind out of his treasure. So you thank the Lord for rain. You thank the Lord for the for the lightning. Who smote the firstborn of Egypt, both the man and the beast. Okay, now we're looking at 
what God did in Egypt. The signs that God did for the nation of Israel in Egypt. And he smote the Egyptian both man and beast as we read. So somebody's going back to history. Who sent tokens and wonders in the midst of thee, O Egypt, upon Pharaoh, upon all his servants. So all those were tokens. They were signs. What's a sign? It's a token. Jews require a sign. Who smote great nations and slew many kings. That's from all the life of Moses and, and uh, Joshua. Shihon, king of the Amorites, and Og, king of Bashan. Now that guy is mentioned 22 times in the Bible. Og. You don't even have the birthday of Jesus, but this guy is given 22 times. And all the kingdom of Cana. And gave their land for an heritage, and heritage unto Israel, his people. Show that to the United Nuts. Show that to the Palestinians. Show that to the Middle East. <coughs> Put that in the classroom of, ge of geography and uh, of uh, social studies in the Middle Eastern schools. And you gotta forgive me with my arms and all that. I ask you to pray for me. I've got a bad sore arm and need to be in different positions for. I'm not freaking out over here or anything. Giving any secret signs or anything. Uh, he gave their land for a heritage and heritage and Israel his people. Thy name, O Lord, endureth forever. Well, there we go. I can think of many names of gods out there that have died out or going to die out. And thy memorial, O Lord, throughout all generations. We, we take part of the Lord's Supper as a memorial. Remind us of what Christ has done for us. It's still going on until the rapture happens. We still read, well, it's a dying thing of churches today to read the stories of Exodus and all that. I mean, we gotta bring in pirates and, and uh, fun times and carnivals and all the kind of junk. We can't go back and read the stories of what God has done. That's a shame. I'll stick with the Bible. You can have the other garbage. For the Lord will judge his people. He will repent himself concerning his servants. God is a judge. He's a holy judge. Imagine people are going to walk up to God and say, Judge not least he be judged. <laughs> yeah, foolish people. Repent himself. There are some things that God wants to do to us, but by the love of the Lord Jesus Christ and as the prayerful prayers of Moses, God stopped. And God would repent. The fact is, when he sent the prophet Jeremiah, if you guys will listen to me, then I, I will not do what I'm telling you I'm going to do. The idols of the heathen are silver and gold, the work of men's hands. This was recited in Psalm 115, 4 verses 4 through 8. If God, if God put something in the Bible twice, Og the king of Bashan, 22 times. This thing we're going to read now down to verse 18, twice in the Bible. It's very important. That's why the Gospels are four times. Much important. They have mouths, but they speak not. Talking about statues. Eyes they have, but see not. They have ears, but they hear not. Neither is there any breath in their mouths. Go back to Genesis 2, 7, where God gave life through breath. They're dead. They're lifeless. Yeah, but people go to them for their life and for their things. And there are places spoken about a Bible in the Bible, you know, God cuts down a tree and he bakes cakes with one and, and he heats one part of it to himself because he's cold and he takes the residue and makes a God and says, Help me. What what the Another place says you gotta carry it around. What, what kind of God do you have to when you gotta carry it? They that make them are like unto them, lifeless, dead, gonna be in a lake of fire one day. So is everyone that trusts in them, dead, lifeless. We've already reviewed that, Psalms 115, 4 through 8. Bless the Lord again. Make the Lord happy, O house of Israel, nation. 
Blessed, make the Lord happy, O house of Aaron, high priest. Bless the Lord, make the Lord happy, O house of Levi, the priest. Ye that fear the Lord, bless the Lord, make him happy. You fear the Lord, make him happy. Blessed be, make happy the Lord out of Zion, the capital city. All right, just in case we forgot somebody, which dwelleth in Jerusalem, everyone else, praise ye the Lord. You know why he mentions a capital city? Because if you're not worshiping God in your capital city, you ain't going to be worshiping God in your nation. Look at America. Look at England. You know why England is in the mess that she is in and come from the King James 1611? Look at what that queen is doing. She has knighted a sodomite. She listens to the crap music that her, her grandchildren listen to. They got a broken family that's broken as, as crooked as anything. And why is the entire nation broken as it is? Because look at the rulership. She's queen of the nation and she doesn't even have no authority. And what they're saying right now, they can't afford to keep up their own buildings. Well, look at America. We got a non-American as a president. So who's coming across our borders? Non-Americans. What are you complaining about? History's repeating itself. As we just read about history in this book with America. We came over here as as illegal aliens and took over. Why can't the other illegal aliens take over America? We did the same thing. Matter of fact, the Mexicans own part of the land of Texas and Louisiana Purchase and all that in California. We came over here with the pilgrims with the Bible and God. And now we're telling God to get out. And you think God's going to let us keep the nation? Keep the land? We're coming up on the, on the thing now, pretty soon, October 31st. How many pumpkins are we going to waste so we can put, carve little figures in them and put a candle? Waste good pumpkin pie. Waste good ground for, that you can grow food for the hungry. I'm getting so sick and tired. I hear on my store overhead, oh, we're going to feed the hungry and all that. And when they're going to party and they feed them. And, and look at all the food you waste by throwing out. Donut places. Oh, oh, we can't. We can't. We're gonna, no, you can't take the, the, the donuts home because be, uh, you're going to throw them in the garbage can. Yeah. There's no blessing alone. That doesn't make God happy. Do you think God is very pleased when he stands outside the church house? He's not permitted? And he won't go into some churches because of the garbage they have? You know, there are some churches where Jesus is not permitted, and there are some churches where Jesus will not go into. And there are churches where Jesus would be pleased. Walks right through the door. Listen, that night when, when he arose from the grave, he could have showed up anywhere in the world. Uh, the, 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 the idiot moron said he showed up to the Native Americans. That's a bunch of lies. He could have showed up in Herod's household. He could have showed up before Pontius Pilate. Say, hi, buddy. How you doing? You want to have a little conversation? Hey, you want uh, I could have showed up to the high priest. Hey, guys, what'd you do to me? He could have showed up to, to the soldiers of the high priest and said, you punched me in the face. It was you that punched me in the cheek. Then they say, well, come on, Jesus, tell us who punched you. He could No, he showed up in the place where 11 and more were, were mourning, who loved him, and he walked right through the door and missed them. Christ won't go where he's not wanted. So he's going to be leaving America because America does not want him. There's only a few churches and a few families that really do want him. And then when we die out or rapture out, that's it. This whole chapter is about praising the Lord. 
And Paul tells us in Corinthians 11 that there's another Jesus, another spirit, another gospel that people are praising. And it's not God. Oh Lord my God, when I in awesome wonder consider all the worlds thy hands have made, I see the stars, I hear the rolling thunder, thy power throughout. Then sings my soul, my Savior God, to Thee. How great Thou art, how great Thou art. Then sings my soul, my Savior God, to Thee. How great Thou art, how great. And when I think that God, his son, not sparing, sent him to die, I scarce can take it in. That on the cross, my burden gladly bearing, he bled and died to take away my sin. Then sings my soul, my Savior God, to Thee. How great Thou art, how great Thou art. Then sings my soul, my Savior God, to Thee. How great Thou art, how great. When Christ shall come with shout of acclamation and take me home, what joy shall fill my heart? Then I shall bow in humble adoration and there proclaim my God.